In the 2021-2022 medical school application cycle, 62,443 pre-medical students applied for medical school, but only 22,666 got accepted. That means that only 36% of medical school applicants actually made it to medical school. Getting into medical school now is harder than it has ever been, which means being a pre-medical student is even harder and more stressful than it has been in the past. Which is hard for me to even wrap my head around because when I was a pre-med student, I didn't think harder and more stressful were even possible. But this has come as a result of what has been termed the Fauci effect. One unintended consequence of Fauci's consistent messaging on this virus has been an increased interest in medical schools. It's a national phenomenon. Tulane Med School is up 35%. Boston University up 26%. Nova Southeastern up 15%. They're saying that applicants are seeing Dr. Fauci's handling of the pandemic, and it's inspiring them to apply for medical school themselves. Now, just to put things in perspective, nearly 10,000 more applicants applied to medical school in this most recent cycle than in any other year going all the way back to 1980. So since getting into medical school is more competitive than it's ever been, you're probably wondering what can pre-medical students do to give themselves the best shot of actually getting into medical school? Well, this is video one in a series of videos where we're gonna walk through everything that you can do to make yourself a competitive applicant, and hopefully by the end, you won't just get into medical school, but you may even have your choice of programs. My name is J.R. Smith, and I'm a medical student at the Mayo Clinic. When I applied to medical school, I was fortunate enough to receive over 10 interview invitations, as well as an acceptance at every school that I interviewed at, including many top-ranked programs. I don't share this to two my own horn, but just to say that I think there were a few things that I did that really helped me and I want to share these things with you. So I hope you find this series helpful and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. So what really matters as a pre-medical student and what doesn't? Well, first let's define pre-med. Pre-med is just a term students use to indicate that they want to go to medical school. It involves students taking a set of pre-med requirements and a standardized exam called the MCAT, which covers all the material that you see in those classes. There's actually no pre-med major. You can be a pre-med student with a biology major or a pre-med student with a business major. And this brings us to point number one. It doesn't matter what you major in as long as you challenge yourself and you're pursuing your interests. When you are deciding on your major, you should be looking for something you genuinely are interested in and would enjoy learning about. Don't feel like you have to be a biology or chemistry major if you're much more interested in something else. That will just cause you to not only despise your courses, but you probably won't end up doing as well, which puts you in a lose-lose situation. Now, I have to reiterate, I'm not saying choose the easiest major you can, I'm just saying choose the major that you're genuinely most passionate about. And you'll see as we progress through this series that following your passions is going to be your biggest leg up on your application. Dr. Damika Rankin, Associate Dean for Admissions at The Ohio State University College of Medicine says, we're not looking to exclude anyone because of a major, and no one really gets an extra bump because of a particular major. All majors are welcome. She goes on to say, We have individuals who major in mathematics, linguistics, nutrition, public health, Spanish, zoology, social sciences, history, engineering, and creative writing. So when you're deciding on a major in college, the question you should be asking yourself is, what am I genuinely most passionate about? not which major is gonna look best to get me into medical school. Because by doing the former, you're actually giving yourself the chance of accomplishing the latter. The American Association of Medical Colleges supports this and they write on their website, there's a misconception that students should major in biology or another science if they wanna to go to medical school. In fact, there's no required or even preferred majors that medical schools are looking for. Consider majoring in whatever interests you and will keep you engaged and motivating during undergrad. Medical schools want students who are authentic with genuine interests, so it's best to major in what you want, not what you think they want. Now, it is also important to remember that you have to take the MCAT exam before going to medical school, which covers primarily the science-based material that you learn in your pre-medical courses. But surprisingly, students majoring in math and statistics, physical sciences, and humanities had higher MCAT scores than students majoring in biological sciences. And for what it's worth, I majored in evolutionary anthropology, which I'm pretty sure most admission committee members never even heard of. Now, once you've picked your major, of course, the next reasonable question is, what is the GPA that I need to become a competitive applicant? Now, I'm firmly against the idea that your GPA is the most important part of your candidacy when you're applying to medical school, but I have to be realistic, and I wouldn't be if I said it didn't matter. But we have to think about why it matters. Medical school is arguably the most challenging academic endeavor a student can experience, and you're going to be pushed intellectually probably harder than you've ever been pushed before. And when committee members are reviewing applicants, one of the first things they want to verify is that you will be able to handle the rigors of medical school. And one of the best ways that we can prove that we're ready for these challenges is by demonstrating academic success in undergrad, particularly in those science classes. Again, you can major in anything, and it's going to be important that you do well in the classes related to your major. But you also have to take those pre-med requirements, many of which are science courses, and relate best to those courses that you're going to be experiencing in medical school. And medical school specifically wants to have confidence that you're going to do well in these courses. So when you apply to 
of medical school, you won't only be sharing your cumulative or overall GPA, but you'll also be sharing your science GPA. And if Orgo treats you how it treated me, that's probably not too encouraging. Unfortunately, it's usually the grades that cause the most anxiety for pre-medical students. But before you lose all hope of ever getting into medical school, let me be the one to reassure you that a few bad grades aren't the end of the world. First, I want to emphasize to you that you do not have to be a 4.0 student to become a competitive medical school applicant. Of the students who are accepted into medical school, the mean cumulative GPA was 3.74 and the mean science GPA was 3.67. So clearly not everyone gets all A's. But what may be even more interesting is the standard deviations between these scores. And I know, stats, puke. Don't worry, just stay with me, I'll do the math. One standard deviation from the mean overall GPA was 0.25. So if we go down by 0.25, that puts us at a GPA of 3.49. And because this represents one standard deviation, this means that 34% of all accepted students had an overall GPA between 3.49 and 3.74. If we did the same thing for the mean science GPA, we'd see that 34% of all accepted students had a science GPA between 3.36 and 3.67. It can be so easy to get caught up in where you stand relative to the mean, but knowing that a third of students who got accepted into medical school may have GPAs very similar to yours may give you a bit of hope. And y'all know we keep it real and authentic on this channel, and so for the students with numbers slightly under these GPAs, just know I'm right there with you. My cumulative GPA was a 3.4 and my science GPA was a 3.2. I think I felt like gasps through the screen. What? 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 Hold up, oh, hold up, wait a minute. Wow. But it just goes to show that yes, your grades matter and are a testament to your ability to handle the rigors of medical school, but are they the end all be all? Absolutely not. And do you need all A's to be a competitive medical school applicant? For my sake, thank God the answer is no. Now for students with GPAs more than two standard deviations away from the mean, it may be in your interest to pursue a post -bac program. These are programs reserved for students who have already completed their undergraduate degrees, but either didn't do as well as they wanted to in their courses or didn't take pre-med courses at all. Sometimes students can experience various challenges in undergrad that have an effect on your ability to excel academically. Completing a post -bac program is a way to demonstrate what you are truly capable of if your undergraduate experience didn't highlight that the best. Alternatively, you can pursue a master's degree to demonstrate your ability to achieve academic success, but this is probably best suited for students who are interested in something specific, not just students who want to do better in their pre-medical courses. For example, if you want a master's in public health because you really want to be the next Fauci and you are genuinely interested in it, Go for it. But again, don't pursue a master's if you're not genuinely interested in it. Now the MCAT can also be used to prove that you can handle medical school, but I talk more about that in another video in this series, so make sure you check that one out. Now, what about extracurriculars as a pre-med? This is probably one of the most important but least understood aspects of the pre-medical experience. First, I have to emphasize that medical schools don't have a list of extracurriculars that they check off as they assess each candidate. So many students get into this box checking mindset where they feel like they need to have a little bit of everything. A little research, a bit of volunteering, a dab a leadership. But if you approach your pre-medical experience like this, for one, you're not going to enjoy half of the things that you're doing. And for two, you can actually appear disingenuous when you apply to medical school. The last thing that you want to show to a medical school is you're only doing things because you think it looks good. I believe by clicking on this video and making it this far in, you genuinely want to get into medical school and become a doctor. And because of that, there is nothing you have to fake. Pursue the clubs, research, and community service projects that you genuinely want to be a part of. The students who make the most out of their pre-medical experience are the ones who identify their passions and pursue those passions as hard as they can. And the reason why is that medical schools aren't looking for specific activities as they are characteristics that make for a good doctor. And you wanting to be a doctor, that deep passion that you have to pursue a career in medicine, I bet that comes with an interest to serve others, or a fascination with science, or a naturally tendency to assume positions of leadership. You don't have to try to do everything, and you really shouldn't. And I know me saying, just do what you're interested in, probably sounds too good to be true. But it really is that simple. Your passions are the roadmap to success, and when you try to override them, you're setting up roadblocks for yourself. When I was in college, I was on the track team, which I captained my senior year, and almost all of my time not in the classroom was spent on the track. During one summer, I worked as a research intern at a sports medicine clinic and absolutely loved it. So after graduation, I spent my gap years as a research assistant there. I didn't have much volunteer hours or other work experiences, but I spent two years doing research and four years committed to track. Those were just the two extracurricular things that I was most interested and passionate about. 
and through them, I was still able to demonstrate things like leadership, work ethic, and an interest in science. But most importantly, I was able to show who I was. If the vast majority of students are trying to fit a mold and you choose to be true to yourself and your passions, you'll find meaning and purpose in what you're doing and you'll be a breath of fresh air to the admissions committee member who has the pleasure of reading your application. Finally, let's talk about medical exposure. Things like shadowing or working in the medical field in some way. Does this matter? Very much so but probably not for the reasons that you're thinking. Getting medical school experience as a pre-medical student is critical, but it's not because you're expected to come into medical school with a certain level of medical knowledge. Your pre-med courses cover the basic science knowledge that you need. It's so that you can get confirmation that this career path is truly for you. Does this mean that you have to spend over 5,000 hours shadowing or have a previous career as a medical assistant? Absolutely not. But you should be able to demonstrate either solidified or elevated interest in the medical field after actually getting a taste of what it really looks like. I mean, you watch through a few seasons of Grey's Anatomy and of course you want to be a doctor. But after experiencing the non-Hollywood version of being a doctor, you may have second thoughts. Dr. Edward Halperin, CEO of New York Medical College, says it best. The point is not to check the box of shadowing, he says. The whole point is, do you understand what you're getting yourself into? Have you done anything which shows that you have some idea of how to deal with people in distress and what physicians do for a living? He goes on to say, it's very easy to spot people who have treated shadowing as a box to check. Which brings us right back to the central theme of this video, which is finding your passions and not treating pre-med like a list of boxes to check. Shadowing a doctor or scribing or interning with a physician are just opportunities to see if your personal interests really fit with the realities of a career in medicine. When someone who's never experienced what being a doctor looks like but claims that they want to be a doctor, it's like someone who's never played basketball themselves telling an NBA player that they want to be in the NBA because it looks fun. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Making the effort to get that experience to prove to yourself that this is the right fit is critical. And then you'll be able to use that experience to highlight all of the ways that you fit perfectly in the career of medicine when it's time to apply. When I was doing research with the attending I was working for, I would occasionally shadow him in the clinic in the OR, and I absolutely loved what he did. That was over three years ago. He's an orthopedic surgeon, and I am still in love with orthopedic surgery. But those are the things that matter most as a pre-medical student, and if I could sum this video up in one single phrase, it would be, what matters most is finding your passion and going after it like no other. But before I go, I want to draw your attention to the Evolving Medic website where you can find literally every piece of content that I create. I even included a list of all the pre-medical requirements and things you can do to gain medical experience in my post on this subject. So make sure to check out the website and check out the other videos in this playlist, including topics like the MCAT, the medical school application, and the medical school interview. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys in the next one. But surprisingly, students majoring in math and math and statistics. But surprisingly, students majoring in math and, sta st and statistics. Goodness gracious. But surprisingly, students majoring in math and sta statistics. But surprise. But surprisingly, students majoring in math and, st and statistics. Math and statistics. Math and. But surprisingly, students majoring in math and statistics. Golly, I can't freak.